Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Sara Satanassi and together with Olivia Levrini, Paola Fantini and Laura Branchetti, we welcome you to this contribution of the symposium on the Identities Project, whose aim is to develop teaching modules on interdisciplinary themes for pre-service teacher education. This contribution focuses on the case of parabola and parabolic motion as an emblematic case of potentially interdisciplinary curricular topic, but then not always it is. It is a simple but a very rich topic able to express what we mean by potential of interdisciplinarity, that is to express the role that interdisciplinary approach has to show the coevolution of mathematics and physics in the history, that is, the inner interdisciplinary nature of scientific thought when it is developed, the process of knowledge transformation from original science into disciplinary knowledge, and the risk that disciplinary knowledge collapses into a weekly structured school science, a collection of information where the epistemological core of a discipline disappears. Indeed, over the years, through habits, textbooks and practices, two school narratives are consolidated. The first is the physics narrative, in which parabolic motion is typically a section in the chapter of two-dimensional cinematics where the composition of the motion is applied to the case of projective. The parabolic shape of the trajectory is mathematically derived in the special case where the projective is launched horizontally. The second is the mathematics narrative, in which the parabola is usually introduced as conic section and or locus of points, and the presentation in the textbooks is mainly focused on its Cartesian and analytical expression. These narratives bring to a disciplinary issue. They leave up to the teacher the role to exploit the inner epistemic core of physics and mathematics as disciplines. Where for disciplines, we mean the reorganization of the knowledge with the scope of teaching it, that is, in such a way that students can develop epistemic skills such as problem solving, modeling, representing, arguing, testing, explaining, and so on. From this perspective, disciplines can still play a relevant educational role, provided that they are explicitly pointed out as forms of knowledge organization historically developed and grounded on scientific epistemologies. Furthermore, these two different narratives can short circuit the historical and cultural relevance of these themes. Indeed, the discovery of parabolic motion represents a crucial step in the historical coevolution of physics and mathematics and in the establishment of physics as discipline. In fact, the theme of parabola and parabolic motion was crucial to overcome the medieval conception of motion and cosmos and to lead the community to accept that the motion could be described by geometrical shapes different from circles and straight lines. Classify the foundational motion not more in terms of natural and violent, but in terms of equable and uniformly accelerated motion and assume that hypotheses have to be checked through new rigorous methodological practices, the experiments and mathematical type of argumentation based on rational reasoning, that is, the proof. Vice versa, in the history of mathematics, also physics played a crucial role. In fact, Kepler, looking for an analogy between reflection and refraction, not only found out a way to overcome some epistemological issues that mathematicians of that time had, but also came up to a unified classification of all the conics as logic, paving the way for the birth of projective geometry. So, our work has two overarching goals. The first one is to analyze historical papers and texts to point out the disciplinary identities of knowledge, that is, their epistemic core, and the mechanism of cross fertilization among disciplines that led both to generate new knowledge and to consolidate it into disciplinary fields.
And the second is to design a module aimed to develop in future teachers interdisciplinary attitudes and skills. To reach the first goal, we mainly focused on two references. The family resemble approach to reflect on identitary aspects of the disciplines, unpacking them in terms of aims and values, method and methodological rules, practices and scientific knowledge that are the epistemic and cognitive core of the Frau Will, and the boundary crossing and boundary objects framework to reflect on interdisciplinarity. From this framework, we took three keywords for talking about interdisciplinarity that are boundary people, that is people with personal experiences of living at the boundary and living the ambiguities that characterize them. Boundary objects that are objects that enact the boundary by addressing and articulating meanings and perspectives of various intersecting words. They are characterized by an intrinsic ambiguity. They belong to both one word and another, and at the same time they belong to neither one nor the other. Finally, boundary crossing, that is mechanism of crossing the boundaries, mechanism of interaction at the boundary that lead to a scale of different effects. This mechanism includes coordination, identification, reflection and transformation. Example of boundary objects in our module that enact boundary crossing mechanism are the cure and the proof. To reach the second overarching goal, that is to design a module aimed to develop interdisciplinary attitudes and skills, the module was structured using the model of study and research path for teacher education developed by Barquero, Bosch and Romo. The module was implemented within the university course on physics education. It involved about 60-70 university students in physics and mathematics and lasted about 20 hours. The result we will present derived from the analysis of essays that students were asked to produce as part of the course evaluation. Students knew that they would be evaluated on the basis of the correctness of the information, the quantity and richness of the information, the consistency, the coherence and the quality of argumentation, and the level of personal re-elaboration. The essays were read and evaluated along each category according to a third degree ranking. One indicate a very low level of, for example, personal re-elaboration instead of for a very high level of personal re-elaboration. The essays that we uh, evaluated for now are 56, and on the left the histogram shows an overall picture of the class. On the x-axis there are the five categories pointed out through the rubric application. For example, the category A indicates essays that are very weak, ranking one or two in all the four criteria. The category D indicates essays that rank three or four in all the criteria. Instead, for example, the category E indicates essays that has a very strong and very high personal re-elaboration, but that are rather weak in one or more of other criteria. As we can see, the most populated categories are the C and D, so the students in average were evaluated very well. For research purposes, the essays have been qualitatively analyzed so as to answer the following questions. How did the students experience interdisciplinarity? And what contribution does this empirical study have to the theoretical debate on interdisciplinarity? Given the pilot character of the study, the explorative nature of research question and the sample, we opt for a semi-qualitative methodology of data analysis inspired by grounded theory. The analysis led us to find a promising sensitizing concept to describe how students lived the interdisciplinary experience and to point out some operational markers to describe the interdisciplinary attitudes and skills. For what concerns the first point, from the essays we noticed two important things. 
students use differently the disciplinary and interdisciplinary vocabulary that we built starting from the framework. And furthermore, students use different words to describe the mutual interaction of the disciplines. To grasp and to describe these differences, we use a metaphor, the city of Eufemia, one of the invisible city by Italo Calvino that help us to distinguish the students between two macro groups. The students that belong to the trading exchange group are students that describe interdisciplinarity as a barter and interdisciplinary experiences as a bazaar in which buy and sell different kinds of goods such as tools, concepts, methods, and so on. And the students that belong to the category of transformative exchange describe interdisciplinarity as a process that leads to a transformation and the interdisciplinary experiences as gathering around the fire and sharing knowledge to reflect about personal identities and co-create new meanings and new knowledge. To point out the markers to describe interdisciplinary attitudes and skills, we applied the metaphor of euphemia in a qualitative and explorative way, starting from the most evident cases. The operational markers we pointed out were the focus of the exchange, the features of boundary objects and the product of the exchange. For what concerns the focus, the trading exchange essays focus on the object of the exchange. Why? The transformative exchange essays more on the mechanism of the exchange, the mechanism of crossing the boundary. For what concerns the features of boundary objects, the trading exchange essays describe the boundary object as object with well-defined properties, as objects that remain ontologically belonging to a single discipline domain, while transformative exchange essays describe the ambiguous properties of the boundary object that do not make them to remain ontologically belonging to a single discipline's domain. Finally, for what concerns the product, the trading exchange essays describe the interdisciplinarity as an enrichment, a mutual and utilitarian experience, while transformative exchange as the creation of new meanings and new knowledge. So, only to recall some students' ideas, trading exchange essays talk about enrichment of knowledge on the same topic, on the same subject, grasp different nuances to recognize the same topic, or for example of mutual substance, so see how physics helps mathematics and how mathematics helps physics. Transformative exchange essays highlight the transformative power of interdisciplinarity and describe interdisciplinary experiences in a very personal and idiosyncratic way. Student 6, for example, describe interdisciplinarity as an interwining between disciplines that provide new lenses for recognizing structures of reasoning that lead to a new and true understanding. The boundary object mediates this dialogue and make this dialogue fruitful. Students 1 instead describe interdisciplinarity as a dialogue between disciplines that are questioned before and after crossing the boundaries to highlight their identity traits through common aspects and differences, to speak of interdisciplinarity and to put oneself in a boundary situation, the search for disciplinary identities for the students is necessary. So, to conclude, experiencing interdisciplinarity and inhabiting the boundary is very challenging and very demanding. Trading exchange is not a way to really experience interdisciplinarity. It is a way for preserving and protecting the identitary aspects that are not at stake. It is a way for not leaving the comfort zone. Transformative exchange instead touches the deeper identitary aspects. It requires to leave the comfort zone, leave the culture of closure, embrace the alterity and the ambiguity, and be able to negotiate meanings and create new ones. Thank you all for the attention.